Again, welcome to the gathering, everybody. Uh, I have just a few words of announcements. First of all, my name is Jenny. I'm one of the associate pastors here. I am not Lance. Lance is out taking care of his family. He's on a paternity leave, and he's going to be back in the end of September. So uh, uh, announcements for today is uh, um, I wanted to tell you about all kinds of opportunities that we have for a connection, for some learning opportunities in the church. If you're looking for a Bible study for a group, here you go. Here's your options. Tuesday, 7 o'clock in the morning. Woo! Who is excited about that? <laughs> uh, Fred uh, is teaching men's in-depth Bible study in room 154, which is right here on the side of uh, Wesley Hall. Uh, so join them any Tuesday. Uh, if uh, you're a guy and you're looking for some connection, for some guy friends, for somebody to, you know, start your week uh, with a good Bible study, good fellowship, good prayer. Uh, next is on Tuesday at 6 p.m. That is kind of like more my time. <laughs> uh, I teach a pastor's Bible study. We are doing right now a series on Bible universe. We're just looking at different topics about the Bible, kind of like everything you wanted to know but never asked. Uh, this week we're going to look at how Old Testament and New Testament kind of relate to each other, why we like more one than the other. How do we study and read both? for the building up of our faith. And uh, uh, last one is uh, on Wednesday at 9.30 in the morning, uh, Phyllis, our pastor Phyllis, she is teaching a parables uh, Bible study also, and they're using a book, No Mercy, No Justice, uh, that was written by one of our pastors. So uh, also grace groups, uh, uh, some of them started, some of them are uh, starting to start. This is our small group ministry at the church. Perfect, perfect opportunity for you to connect with other people, build your group, build your tribe that is going to pray for you, that's going to be there with you, uh, and also take time during the week where you actually think about what is my relationship with God, where am I, how is my faith coming into place in whatever it is that is happening right now with you. Uh, so we have uh, uh, some groups that can take some more people. Wednesday uh, at 6 p.m. here at the church, uh, we have also another group on Thursday afternoon at the church. So if it's Thursday 2 p.m. and you're sitting at home and you're wondering, what can I do to do good for my soul? Sign up for that grace group on Thursday at 2 p.m. You won't regret. Uh, anyway, so if you, are, if you have some more questions about opportunities in the church, we have a lot going on. Uh, again, don't be shy. Ask me in the end of the service, hey, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for that. I want to participate in a Bible study. I want to have a small group. Uh, I will help you. I'll be happy, happy, happy to help you find your little tribe where you can thrive in your faith and support other people. So these are all of the announcements. I'm about to uh, pass the baskets. Two things go in the baskets. Hi there. Your attendance cards, please let us know you were here. Uh, and uh, if you are a guest also, don't be shy. Uh, we would love to just greet you say, and say thank you to you for being with us. We would love to know you were here. And your gifts and your offerings also go into the baskets. Your generosity is what makes all the ministries in this church possible. I also want to thank all of the volunteers, all of our ministry partners that put so much work into making this worship service happen. I want to also say hi and thank you for people who are at the Gathering Cafe. This is our overflow space uh, on the third floor in room 350. These are people who said, I'm going to give up my prime spot, the prime real estate right here, and I will be on the third floor participating in the worship service, but also making sure that if we we do have a guest. There is plenty of space here on the first floor where they can come and participate in worship and experience the gathering fully. So I appreciate that you are there on the third floor joining us in worship. And now I invite you to stand up and uh, uh, join me in the invocation. I'm going to read the leader part of the text and you will read bold in italics. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day of new beginnings. This is a time for growing into new disciples for Jesus. Come, let us prepare ourselves for worship. Let us be prepared for service to God. Amen. Good morning. It's so good to be here with you. Uh, my name is Savannah, and uh, welcome to the gathering. Um, we're going to start off this morning uh, by worshiping together a song, a new song called Lord Have Mercy, and um, I'll kind of teach it to you, and then we'll repeat it, and um, I'm looking forward to worshiping with you all this morning, so sing it with us. <laughs> Oh, 
when I come to you in prayer, Lord, have mercy. When I wonder if you're there, Lord, have mercy. When I cannot find the way, Lord, have mercy. Should my heart begin to stray, Lord, have mercy. Hi guys, if you don't know me, my name is Kat, I'm the Director of Youth Ministries, um, and I'm going to be leading us in our prayers to the people today. Every time we gather together, we pray together. We speak to God knowing that God listens, and we listen to God knowing that God speaks. We do this through what we call prayers to the people. You'll hear a couple of times throughout the prayer me say, Lord, in your mercy, and you'll respond with, hear our prayers. Let's practice that. Lord, in your mercy. At the end of the prayer, um, I'll lift up some names, and I'll ask, are there any others? This is your chance to lift up names of people who are on your hearts, people either you're celebrating or you're grieving, people um, who God has placed in your heart to pray for. I ask that you just say out the names, even if it's over all of your neighbors. Um, God always hears all of our prayers all together at the same time, so I think God hears them all. Um, and so that'll be your chance to pray out loud for people you wish to pray for. So if you guys would bow your heads <laughs> I'm going to lead us in prayer. Gracious and loving God, it is so hard for us to trust you. Too often we look at the world and see only violence, pain, destruction, signs of hopelessness. 
Too often we rely on our own strength, our own plans, our own devices to see us through. We set our sails confident that we can and will weather the storm alone. You call us to trust you. You tell us that we are not alone in the storms we face, that you guide us, carry us, and see us through. Forgive us. Help us set our sights and sails toward you when we are lost, that we might find our way home. Help us navigate the waters of the world, that we might experience your abundant grace, mercy, and love. Help us to trust you. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, you are the creator of all things, everything, and everything that you create, you proclaim to be good. Evidence of the goodness of your creation continues to testify all around us. New lives, new families, new jobs, new hopes, new opportunities. For all these blessings, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy. At the same time, O oh God, everything you create, you make to be free. Over and over again, that freedom is used for purposes of sin, for separation from you, for violence, for greed, for hatred, for oppression. Remind us that when we were at our worst, you did not give up on us or turn away from us. Instead, you joined us, came alongside us in the power and presence of your son, Jesus, not to condemn us, but to reconcile us and bring us back to you once and forever. For the salvation offered us in Jesus, O oh God, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy. Always and everywhere, O oh God, we are never alone. Through the Holy Spirit, you guide us, inspire us, and shine a light before our feet so that we might learn to walk in your ways. For your presence, your love, your guidance, O oh God, we give you thanks. Lord, in your mercy. For Ainsley, Lord, in your mercy. For Henry, Lord, in your mercy. For Jackson, Lord, in your mercy. Are there any others? Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. For all the names spoken out loud and all the names kept in the silence of our hearts, hear our prayers. For all who seek the strength to face another day of difficulty and pain, hear our prayers. For all who seek to change their hearts and lives and to find peace in you, hear our prayers. And for each and every one of us seeking to experience your love and know your will, hear our prayers. Guide us, keep us, make us into your people. And Lord, in your mercy. Hello, I'm Jamie. I normally sing in the traditional service, but today I'll be singing uh, Thy Word in the style of Amy Grant. If you're so moved, please uh, join me. to 
nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Thank you, Jamie. After this, I, I really, I got nothing. <laughs> um, so uh, we are in the sermon series, uh, Facing Life's Storms, and uh, uh, Kat, who led us in uh, prayer, told me that my Russian accent is not helping me here. I can't really do the whole life's storms, so that's why you can read it on the screen, but I'm trying, I promise you. Um, so um, over the next few weeks, what we're going to talk about is... Uh, um, all the different difficulties that every single one of us goes through at some point in our lives. And if you are right now living through this blissful time in your life where God is just blessing you right and left and you wake up in the morning and you just was like overwhelmed. Wow, God, you showed up and you just rocked my world and I'm so blessed. Well, you know what? Be thankful. Soak it up. Write it in your journal. I don't know. Remember it because the storms also come. We go through these phases where everything is great, and this is usually the time we kind of, you know, like to distance ourselves, like, God, you are there, you're good, but I got it, you know, I, I'm great. No, 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 soak in all the goodness, soak in every single blessing, because as every single one of you probably know here, those times sometimes pass, and then other times come, and those are the ones that we describe as storms. Uh, I want to just show you what will be the... the um, uh, I thought Lance corrected that. I'm stealing his slides from last week, and he thought that he, he said that he's going to work on the, on the uh, colors there, but they're still not bright for me enough. Anyway, so these are some main foundations that every single sermon that you're going to hear uh, in this series and beyond, this is what we believe here at The Gathering. This is what we stand on, that Christianity, this is our religion. This is what we wake up on put our feet on, live by. Christianity is not about escaping the world. We can't do it, we we'll live in the world. It is about deep and meaningful living. So right there in the middle of your storm, believe it or not, you can experience meaningful, deep living right there with God by your side. Next one is, Christianity is more about thou shall nots, or uh, Pastor Lance says, shooting on yourself. I should have, I should have, or you should not have. We do that all the time. I am guilty of it. It is the why and how to for a rich and healthy soul. That's what we are here for. We want to know how. How tomorrow morning I'm going to wake up and somehow have my soul in the middle of the hardest storm still be filled with God's spirit, with joy, with peace. How you do that? We're gonna try to figure it out together. Uh, next one is Christianity is not a guarantee that nothing bad will happen. If you read the Bible, any, any book, any chapter, just open it, you will see that bad things happen to good people. And bad things happen to okay people, you know, all of us struggling. I'm really trying, but sometimes I fail. Bad things happen. There is no guarantee that we're going to go through the life with nothing happening to us, you know, just God laying the way of nothing but easy, blessed, living with no trouble and no fears. That's not possible on this earth. This world is broken. We are living in the middle of the broken world, 
with the promise of God's kingdom. So what our faith does to us is it provides a foundation to weather every single storm. That is what I firmly believe, that our faith, what is in this book that we learn about God and about people and our relationship is enough to weather every single storm. So the sermons that you're going to hear, I'm just going to kind of give you an idea. Maybe you can know someone who you would want to invite. This is what we are looking at uh, for the rest of the series. When you are worn out, next week, Kat, our youth minister, is going to preach because guess what? This girl is worn out. <laughs> so I told her she can use me as an example the entire worship service. I can even stand here <laughs> next to her. Um, when a loved one dies, unfortunately, it happens. And our love, as dear and as strong as it can be, it cannot hold people in this world. People pass away, even when we love them so dearly, even when we put every single effort into keeping them with us. Sometimes there is nothing we can do. So how do we weather that storm? When you face change, when you are worried sick, and then Lance is going to finish the series with finding a calm in the center of the storm. And I can't wait to hear that sermon. I definitely need to hear that word. Um, but today we are talking about uh, being paralyzed with guilt. And honestly, I never thought of guilt being able to paralyze me, because that's all I've got, my experience. Um, until I got to working on this text and thinking through this message, and I thought, you know what? It kind of makes sense. Because what is guilt? I'm a super visual person. I have to imagine everything that I can look at, kind of feel, maybe touch. That's how my brain operates. So when I think of guilt, I think of a, of a big pile that I kind of keep in my, I don't know, backyard or something. You know, it's sacred. Nobody touches it. It's mine. I created it. And what do I put into that pile? I put everything that I feel guilty for. And I'm not gonna be doing here confessions, I still want you to respect me as a pastor, but I'm also a person. So here we go. Broken relationships, dumb mistakes done by me that hurt other people, betrayed friendships, put that one on, um, people that I hurt even knowingly, but for some reason at, the point, at that point, I thought that somehow I can justify it, and then I feel guilty for that. It just stays there. Let's see, what else? Um, parenting, the worst mom in the world, you're looking at her right there. Because who else will leave a newborn baby with someone else for 10 hours for five days a week? This mom did it. Not enough, I, it's never not enough for my family, for my, for my uh, husband, for my child. I ne I'm never enough. Here, goes into my guilt pile. I'm not earning enough, I'm not bringing enough, I'm not spending enough time, I'm not cheerful enough, I'm not supportive enough. You know, all of that right there, right there, sits on top of that pile. Let's see, what am I forgetting? Oh yeah, my favorite one. I had to write the list. I spent a lot of time this week thinking about it. Uh, my favorite one is all the time and all the opportunities that I wasted when I should have done something. Remember that shooting? I told you I love that one. Yeah, that one goes on top. So once I pile up all my guilt, and it makes a fairly good pile in my, in my, in my visionary mind, what I do is I crawl under it, and I stay there. And when all of that weight is there, and I just keep, you know, feeling it and experiencing it and going deep into it and analyzing it and going through all of those conversations or conversations that I should have had but never happened, and guess what? Under that pile, I am not moving. I am actually paralyzed. Those friendships never get healed. Relationships never get restored. Times continues to be wasted while under that pile, experiencing all the weight of it on me. Is that the full, meaningful living that I just read you about? No, it's not. But unfortunately, I do spend hours 
with my favorite little guilt pile that I hold so sacred that for some reason I feel like, well, I have to have it, right? Like I have to look at myself, I have to examine myself, and that's what happens. I'm just gonna make me a pile and crawl under it. So our text today, surprisingly, is about the person who created that kind of a pile, <clears throat> crawled under it, and the weight of it was enough to keep him paralyzed, literally. I never read that text this way until this week when I was preparing for the sermon. But I think it has a very powerful message for all of us who have the, our little or big piles of guilt that we are putting there and crawling under them. So let's turn to our Bibles and read about this gentleman and what happened to him and see if we can identify some common points that we have with him and his experience. We're in Mark um, chapter two, and we're gonna start in the beginning, we're gonna read verses one through 12. So the book of Mark is kind of, uh, let's see, three quarters to the Bible. Um, Gospel of Mark just started, it's chapter two, Jesus barely hit the road. Like, he just was, you know, here's the beginning and we're in chapter two and this is happening. So it's very beginning of Jesus' ministry. And this is what we read. After a few days, Jesus went back to Capernaum, and people heard that he was at home. So many gathered that there was no longer space, not even near the door. Jesus was speaking the word to them. Some people arrived, and four of them were bringing to him a man who was paralyzed. They couldn't carry him through the crowd, so they tore off part of the roof above where Jesus was. When they had made an opening, they lowered the mat on which the paralyzed man was, laying, was lying. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Child, your sins are forgiven. Some legal experts were sitting there muttering among themselves, Why does he speak this way? He's insulting God. Only the one God can forgive sins. Jesus immediately recognized what they were discussing, and he said to them, why do you fill your minds with these questions? Which is easier, to say to a paralyzed person, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your bed, and walk? But so you will know that the human one has the authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, get up, take your mat, and go home. Jesus raised him up, and right away, he picked up his mat and walked out in front of everybody. They were all amazed and praised God, saying, we've never seen anything like this. God speaks to us through the reading of the scripture. Thanks be to God. So what is happening, like I said, Jesus just barely hits the road, but somehow, people already know who he is and what he's doing. And uh, these uh, friends bring the guy, you know, they can't get into the building. By the way, this is where I thank people who are in the gathering cafe so that we have always space here so that nobody's trying to get through the roof because I'm pretty sure that our maintenance team is not gonna be happy if somebody's trying to get through the roof and put somebody in here up front and say, well, but that's in the Bible. So I am so thankful for all the people who went upstairs so that we have space here. And, uh, 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 and so once they tear up the roof, you know, I, uh, I actually spent the entire summer fighting with insurance company <laughs> over some home repairs. So when I was reading this text, I'm like, I wonder if uh, an act of faith is covered in the insurance policy. <laughs> How did they explain that to the adjuster? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> um, they lower the man, Jesus looks at him, and you know what, he's not saying, oh gosh, you have so much to deal with, you'll just have to come back to me every day until the day you die, and maybe at some point you'll get better. That's not what Jesus says. He also doesn't say, all right, well, let's sit down and talk. What you have here that keeps you laying down on this mat that you can't even get up and move? He doesn't say that either. He doesn't look at him and say, whoa, you probably really messed up in your life since you, since the state you're in. No, doesn't say any of that. 
he goes right to the center of the problem and says, you know what? Your sins are forgiven. Wow. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is the power that raises that man from what was holding him down. Now, you all made your way uh, here to the gathering. I didn't see anybody carrying anybody on the mats, and I was by Jesus' statue up there, so I saw most of you coming into the worship service. But I bet you your soul sometimes feels like it can't just move. You are just stuck there under your pile of guilt. And to that guilt, we also sometimes add shame. You know what shame is? It's when guilt is made Facebook official. <laughs> it's when you already know you messed up, but now you, are telling, you have all kinds of people who are pointing at you and saying, yeah, you did. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's what shame is. So shame and guilt together, yeah, you bet your soul will feel paralyzed. You bet your soul will never feel like, oh, I'm just rising here up, and I want to just praise the Lord, and I want to see what the day is. No, that's not what you do when you're under your pile of guilt and shame. But Jesus tells him, you know what? Your sins are forgiven. Just get up and go. And then he goes into this conversation with the legal experts and tells them, it's the same thing whether I tell him your sins are forgiven or, you t or I tell him get up and go. And what I like about that, that he tells the man, you know what, pick up your mat, get up and go. Jesus expects immediate, visible transformation in the life of a person once he announces to him, your sins are forgiven. Right there, right now, you can live differently. To the point where a paralyzed man gets up and walks. Immediate transformation, visible transformation, to the point where everybody's like shocked and sitting like, we've never seen anything like that. And I bet you they're not talking about the roof. But who knows? <laughs> so that visible transformation, and that is where I got stuck, because the visible transformation in my life would mean for me to get from under my guilt pile and actually take Jesus' words that I am forgiven. And I did it this week. I actually prayed a few times. And sometimes I felt like, yeah, I did it, God, I feel it. I can feel like a different person. I can feel like I'm free from all that guilt because you told me so. And then my broken nature comes in and says, well, but what about the big pile? Do you think God can forgive that? Yes. That's what I'm proclaiming to you today. The good news today is that doesn't matter what's in your pile of guilt and shame, doesn't matter who put it there, how long you've carried it around, how often you crawl under it, none of it matters. Jesus never asks any of those questions. What he says is, you are forgiven. God is not in the business of judging. God is not in the business of making lists of all of our sins, of all of our dumb mistakes that hurt us and hurt other people. That's not what God is doing. If that is who our God was, we would all be paralyzed. And none of us would ever be able to crawl from under our pile of guilt and shame. But Jesus shows us here in the gospel that that's not what I'm in here for. That's not why you are here. I'm just gonna tell you, you are forgiven. And I will invite you right now to do something special with me. I picked up this book, it's a, you know, it's a book of worship for our church. All of those prayers, all of those litanies have been um, recited by generations and generations. And I opened it, and I read the prayer of confession. Confession of sins, confession that yeah, I have the pile, yeah, it's big, I created it. And guess what, I'm under it, God help me. We do prayers of confession here at the gathering every single time, and I will invite you to do it again right now with me. We will, what we will do, some of you may even remember that from the days when you went to the big church and recited all the long prayers. We, some of you will recognize the words. I didn't change anything. I figured, you know, if it worked for generations, it'll probably work for me too. But I will ask uh, Ellie to put them up on the screens and we will read it together. And as we read it, I actually want you to mean it because if you are the one that has your pile of guilt and shame, these are the words for you. 
Let's read it together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners under our guilt piles. That proves that God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And I'm going to ask you to get up. Come on, get up. Don't pick up your chairs. I'm going to be a little bit <laughs> more flexible than Jesus. Get up. Now straighten up those shoulders. Come on. Straighten them up. Take a deep breath. You got from under your pile, because guess what? You have just proclaimed the good news to yourself. You are forgiven. Now you can sit down. It's not time to walk out of the church. But I want you to remember that moment. I wanted you to remember that deep breath of freshness, of freedom. That is the good news of Jesus Christ. In essence, Jesus had a few seconds with that man, and he put the entire gospel into those words. Your sins are forgiven. So guess what? My expectation to me first, because I'm the first one here with my pile, and to you all, is when you walk out of here, think of you as the people who are transformed by God's love. People whose pile has been forgiven, it's gone. Forget it, leave it alone. Don't crawl under it, God doesn't care anymore. What God wants is the joyful, meaningful, deep living in faith out there in the world, wherever you are, in your families, in your jobs, in, at your homes. That's what God wants for you. Leave the pile. Don't live like a paralyzed man. Do you think that man ever decided to get on the mat and lay down and pretend that he's paralyzed again? I bet you not. He probably signed up for a marathon. It's like, hey, let's see how that works. <laughs> let's see if that healing really stuck with me. I bet you he was happy to run. He probably was looking at his feet, checking his back. Oh my gosh, I can stand, I can walk. This is what I want you to experience in your body, in your soul. You are free. Live like God called you to live. And then I want to finish with the friends, because these guys are just amazing. Well, besides tearing up the roof, because I'm not quite on board with that plan. But, <laughs> again, maybe I spend too much time with farmer's insurance. Um, <laughs> what, what, is, what really caught my attention is, look at that. In verse 5, Jesus, tell, Jesus saw their faith. So the guys didn't just carry their friend, climbed on the roof with a paralytic. Imagine that climbing on the roof, holding a paralytic, lowered him down. They had faith. They had faith in Christ before the guy even had faith. Now, my question to you is, do you have a tribe like that? Do you have a group of friends that you know are going to have faith in you, even when you don't have faith in yourself? Do you have a tribe that will carry you, that will be there with you until they actually see that, all right, God is with you, you now got it. Do you have that kind of a tribe? That is what we ought to be thinking about if we are not living right now in the middle of the storm. This is the storm preparation phase. Build your tribe. Invest in those kinds of relationship. Find the people that will pray for you, that will show up at your house, that will carry you if necessary, that will have faith in you and in what God can do in your life before you even have that faith. Because that's what healed the paralytic. It was the faith of his friends. And that is why I emphasized today when I was doing the announcements, all kinds of groups and studies that we do at the church. All of that, the major focus is for us to provide for you time and space and structure for, to come 
and meet people and build those kinds of relationships so that when the storm comes, you have a tribe that will carry you. I hope they're not gonna mess up with the ceiling at Wesley Hall, but they will do whatever it takes to get you to where you experience God's presence. Build your tribe. Let us pray. Merciful, great, powerful, loving God, I give you thanks for the freedom that we have in you. I give you thanks, God, for the healing of our souls and our bodies that you do every single day. And I thank you, God, for the friends that sometimes have to carry us until we ourselves can get up and walk saved by your grace. I pray, God, that we treasure these relationships and we treasure and invest the freedom that we have in you. And now let us all pray together the prayer that Jesus Christ himself taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to invite right now communion stewards to come forward. We're going to celebrate the forgiveness and the freedom that Christ gives us. We do this every single Sunday. And I invite every single one of you, even if you feel like you are not enough, that you shouldn't be coming up front here. Yes, you should. This is an invitation from the Lord. This table is open for everyone here. On the night when Jesus Christ died for our sins, for our guilt piles, he was with his disciples who were far from perfect. Jesus took bread, broke it, showed it to his disciples, gave it to them and said, this is my body broken for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Eat it each time you remember me. Jesus Christ gives his forgiveness to us freely and invites every single one of us to his table. In the end of the dinner, he took a cup of wine. He blessed it, he gave thanks for it. And then he looked at his disciples and he said, this cup is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it each time you get together in remembrance of me. And so we do this every single time, every single Sunday here at the gathering. We celebrate what God has done for us at the cross. We celebrate communion with non-alcoholic grape juice so that no one has to choose between sobriety and taking communion. We also have a gluten-free station right now in the middle with Chris. If you need a gluten-free option, still come up front. Everyone is invited. Come, the table is set.
Thank you, the band. Uh, our worship service is coming to an end. Before you leave, please pick up uh, the, any kind of cups or cards that you have laying around. Also, if you are a guest with us and you are still holding on to that attendance card, you can fill it in and drop it there in the basket on your way out. I will be outside also greeting you, and I would love to know that you were uh, worshiping with us today. And uh, if you are a first-time guest, we have a gift for you. Carol in the back is there uh, with a big Ask Me tag and a big red basket. She would love to give you a gift from our church as an appreciation for worshiping with us today. And now please receive the benediction. Go in peace and let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and a fellowship Holy Spirit give you strength to face any storm, any day. Amen.